I step on the scale and I'm so sick of all of my music. Does anyone else relate to that? The first thing that I did that I think 100% helped me. I'm telling y'all, I feel strong today. I never felt deprived with food. I didn't feel like I was eating anything less. Maybe that's a me thing. Like, let me know if you guys are like, live, y'all are tripping. Dang, do we move up? That leads me to my last tip that I really, really want to echo to you guys is I. All right, dudes, welcome back to another video. I am already changed to go to the gym and I have to show you my outfit because it's so freaking cute. Are you kidding me? And I just want to say, why didn't I think to pair light pink with red? Like, and this is so cute for Valentine's Day. Oh, I can't get over it. And with these great, like, hi, this is so cute. I can't get over it. First of all, my lips are so chapped. I need to find chapstick ASAP. Two, I want to do a little disclaimer before we get too far into this video because A, I don't want this video to trigger anyone. And two, I want to be responsible with my messaging. And three, I want to be very clear with just what I'm trying to communicate. So first of all, if you are kind of triggered by the talk of weight loss, that sort of thing, then definitely just click off this vlog. Isn't the best one for you. And I'm also not trying to like glamorize losing weight or saying that you have to lose weight or that you should be losing weight, et cetera, et cetera, or saying that I needed to lose weight to be healthy. I just think that this was kind of a very interesting little, I guess, thing that happened to me, I guess, that I've experienced. And I just want to share with you guys and update with you guys, because obviously this is a huge part of this channel is all around fitness. And I think this is kind of a good little learning experience for everyone, including myself. And I'm hoping more than anything, me chatting about this little experience can help relieve you guys and like take off some of the pressure that like so many of us put around weight loss and like going through a cutting phase and whatever the case may be. But like I said, I am going to the gym and hitting legs. It's about noon right now and I have such a busy day and so I just wanna get this finished with and over with. But I am gonna take one of these protein bars for a little bit of a snickety snackety, which I just wanna say, I'm still like a Quest Bar stan. Like we have one here and I saw something on TikTok the other day of like how awful Quest Bars were. And like, I don't, and like this is not sponsored at all by any means. But like I've, I think, I swear it's one of those things when it's just like, what is comforting for you? Like I've eaten Quest, but like Quest bars was the first protein bar I ever, ever ate. And like I grew up seeing my dad eat them. So I think that's why I'm like maybe biased. I don't know, but I like genuinely love Quest bars. Maybe that's a me thing. Like let me know if you guys are like live, y'all are tripping. I do want to take a little pre-workout drankity mainly because I really want to be on my collagen because since it's been freezing here, I haven't been eating as many like protein smoothies. I've been eating more protein bars because I just don't want something cold but then it makes me not get my collagen in. So maybe I'll just do a little non-stim oxy shred situation. Even though I could use some caffeine, maybe I'll mix it. Pro tip, don't do too much water because then I feel super full from all the water and then I end up having to pee once I finish drinking all this. So I'm gonna do about half and half of each. I'm doing non-stim um, strawberry sunrise, my favorite non-stim flavor ever. And then I'm gonna do some of the mango flavor. This one does have some caffeine in it. Just so I get a little boost, but not like a crazy boost, you know? And then some of their oxyglow collagen. Because I'm trying to crush this workout and have really strong, healthy hair, skin, and nails. Dudes, this thing was low on batteries at one point and it was like barely freaking mixing anything. And now this thing's like a freaking jetpack. Here, did you see that? That is some power. Bum, bum, bum. If you guys would like to support me and you want to help maximize and take your gym sessions to the next level, you could use code LIFFIT10 when you're looking to buy some EHP Labs subs. The mango with the strawberry is like the perfect compliment. Want to know what I love for me is that I high key forgot to put on any sort of fragrance, no deodorant, no nothing. So that's lovely. Let me give you guys the 411 so you like know what I'm talking about. Basically, I haven't weighed myself honestly since like the end of November according to my um, scale app. I just haven't really been focused on it really for the past like year to be fully honest. I haven't really had any strict 
physicals at all. Like, as you guys know, I haven't been going through any like building phases or cutting phases. And to be fully honest, I was thinking about weighing myself and I was like, mm, I don't know. But then like, I really honestly, to be fully transparent, like push myself to do so because I wanna like just make sure that the scale is just a number for me and doesn't mean anything more or anything less. And just remember that it's just a tool. So I was like, let's just do a benchmark because it's been so long. I step on the scale and I was literally shocked. I stepped on it like three times because I was so confused because I was honestly not expecting it whatsoever. I have been feeling a little bit leaner lately, but I thought it was just me kind of feeling that way. I didn't really think my weight, I guess, was gonna reflect it, if you will. And I weighed in about like three to five pounds lighter, depending on like, cause my weight obviously fluctuates. And so anyways, I was just shocked because it was completely something that was unintentional and I wasn't like, I don't know, I just wasn't expecting it and I haven't really been doing anything to my awareness, knowledge, to change anything, to change my routine. But then after I was reflecting on it of like, huh, how did I just get to this point really without trying? I've thought of a few things that I did, I guess, if you will, again, unintentionally that got me to this point that I wanna share with you guys. And I hope that some of these tips can help, that you guys can apply to help you like achieve your own goals if you're in more of like a fat loss phase or cutting some weight is your goal. But okay, I'm gonna start off with leg press because I, I will say I really miss the freaking hack squat machine at my old gym. That's pretty much the only piece of equipment that I'm really missing here. But it's just like a good, cause I'm just gonna wanna do a back squat. I wanna do the hack squat, you know? But I'm gonna look at the positives and be stoked that I have like a leg press that I like and I'm gonna work on getting stronger on this. <laughs> I am feeling pretty nice and strong today, so that's a perk. We're gonna throw on some 25s with this plate. Adding 10 more pounds to each side. I'm so sick of all of my music. Does anyone else relate to that? You know what's bad when I'm just like shuffling through my whole entire song library. <laughs> all right, technically working set number two. Five. This weight feels good. Six. Solid, solid, solid. I'm stoked. This feels really good today. I feel strong. So I'm gonna do a total of four sets of 10 on this. I always get asked if I lift with my rings on and I came up with this little system that works really well. I keep one of these like little jewelry bag things in my gym bag and it's perfect because I'll just chuck my rings off and put them in here and they're all in one place because I literally used to just dump them in my gym bag and obviously that's problematic so that's my new little system okay now we're going to go into a hip hinging movement basically an RDL variation and I've been loving doing this on the landmine bar just because they're really it was always difficult at my old gym to get a landmine bar I so I feel like I would never use it and so I've been soaking up any minute every minute from having that here in this gym But I want to talk about really quickly the first thing that I did that I think 100% helped me kind of unintentionally, inevitably like lose some weight. First of all, I was doing like zero cardio for the past few months, barely any steps as well. I want to make sure this mic is close enough. And so obviously when you're going from that point into adding in some sort of extra movement, like you're going to see some sort of progress and results. So I didn't really increase my step goal. So what I did instead was I added in like a steady state cardio session once a week on Wednesdays. I've just been doing like 12, 3.30 and inclined walk on the treadmill and it seems like nothing and it's like so not a big deal for me and I honestly enjoy it. And it helps me like just get my heart rate up a little bit more but I truly feel like just adding that in once a week like helped me majorly, more so mentally and just feeling wise, but also I guess with my actual like numerical weight loss results, it also did play a role in that too. Okay, so for this I have like the smallest little step here just to help me get more range of motion because I am using a big plate here and given the flexibility of my hamstrings, like usually it just stops me too short because the plate is so big that it cuts off my range of motion. So that's why I'm stepping on this little stool here to get me a little few inches of extra depth here.
Sorry, people. So I'm feeling really indecisive about if I should do hip thrusts right now or Bulgarians, but I've been really slacking on Bulgarians and I feel like I've been going heavy the past few times on hip thrusts. So I'm gonna do these first, even though I traditionally like to do single leg work like after all my bilateral compound stuff, but I wanna really be able to load these and go hard. I think I'm gonna do like three to four sets of eight. So I'm going a little bit heavier today. I'm using 40s. Like I said, probably gonna stay in that eight rep range and then I'm gonna do lighter hip thrusts more so for volume after this. But these are gonna wreck me, I already know it. So I am using grips for this just because I am going heavier and my legs just tend to be heavier than my grip strength. Is this helping improve my grip strength? Absolutely not, but it is helping <laughs> my legs grow by being able to lift more weight. Because usually by the end of my set, like my hands are giving out when I could do more reps. So I like to start by getting in position like this first to know my distance from the bench. And then I kind of come up and stand up like so. And so I already know I can find the bench when I kick my leg back and I'm sinking back and down into this lunge. It's not completely vertical. I'm really trying to sit back into that front leg's heel and driving up through that heel. Yep. Eight. Whew. That felt better than I thought it was going to. I'm telling y'all, I'm feeling strong today. It's the oatmeal this morning, what could I say? I like to take a little breather in between legs. All right, next one. Yep. You guys, I totally could push 45s if I wanted, slash get 10, maybe 12 reps with that weight. Dang, do we move up? I think we move up, people. Damn, I don't know the last time I pushed 45s. All right, dogs. Not gonna lie, this is juicing up my confidence right now. Two, three, eight. Okay, that was eight. Definitely felt heavy, but not impossible. Two, eight. God damn. That feels harder, I'll tell you that. So since, like I said, I want this last exercise of hip thrust to be more of like volume rise, I decided to turn this into a little circuit. So essentially we're going less weight and resistance but higher rep to kind of account to add some more intensity in here. And I had the idea to do a little circuit situation. Basically we're gonna do banded hip thrust for like sets of 15. And then I'm going to do standing plated lateral kicks, of course, to get that abduction work. And then we're gonna finish off with just some donkey kicks, like sets of 20. 12 on each leg banded obviously this is usually what I do when I'm like over my workout but I know I have more exercises to do I'll just turn it into a circuit <laughs> I'm actually gonna change the order and go directly into donkey kicks basically keeping a flex foot keeping a bend in that leg and squeezing my glute to drive my heel to the ceiling. Whew. Booty on fire. So for this, I just like to use a little 25 pound plate and I hold it on the side of my leg. This is a great variation also if you guys don't have like that hip machine that I have here or like the seated hip abduction. I basically get a nice little loose athletic stance on my resting standing leg and I'm gonna drive out my working leg out to my side. You wanna make sure that you're not trying to actually brace the weight with this hand holding it. It's just a hook for the weight to stabilize it next to your leg. But all of that working weight is coming from, but all of that weight is coming from that working leg driving up to the side. But I wanna talk about the next thing that I think helped me lean out a little bit. And obviously it's no secret, there's no way around you know, cutting corners with a calorie deficit. If you're looking to lose weight, you need to somewhat create some sort of calorie deficit, meaning you are consuming less calories than you are burning. And I think the reason why I was able to kind of lean out unintentionally is that 
I never felt deprived with food. I didn't feel like I was eating anything less, but I naturally kind of ate foods of higher volume, if you will, based on just the themes of what I kind of kept eating, meaning that my foods were lower calorie, but they still take up a lot of room on your plate and in your stomach. So you feel like you're eating a lot of food. I feel like I was eating more like soups and chilies and just things that were not as heavy, but still took up a lot of my plate, like a lot of vegetables, like spaghetti squash. I was really hooked on that with like meat sauce, things like that, that were inherently lower calorie, but still really filling with fiber and things like that. So I didn't even genuinely didn't realize or pay attention to the fact or notice that my meals were kind of inevitably just made up of lower calories because they weren't as calorically dense. Also, with that being said, you guys know I haven't really been eating my oatmeal. I have today in like the past few days actually, um, just because I've been genuinely wanting it. I've been feeling a little hungrier, but I do think also that played a role because it inevitably kind of could contribute to a lower caloric intake for the day, if you will. But I think that's a really big tip, especially if you do have a goal to lean out. It doesn't need to be this huge, big bear in your mind of like, oh, I need to micromanage my calorie count and all the things I'm eating and blah, 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 and try to feel like you need to count every calorie you're eating. Like instead, there's a lot of substitutes that you can make so you don't feel like you're kind of eating anything less or in a fat loss phase, if you will, but it is supporting your goals and you're eating to support your goals. So easy things like swapping cauliflower rice or regular rice or spaghetti squash for actual spaghetti, things like that, or eating more soups, right, that have just like a lower calorie base can really help you just with those little swaps. All right, workout is officially finished. And another thing that's coming to my mind is definitely sleep. Like I've been really good about my sleep lately again unintentionally but i feel like i've been getting a solid eight to nine hours every night i just have been sleeping well and just prioritizing rest like that's the thing which i'm gonna get into like as i continue through these little tips and things i've noticed like i truly feel like i just haven't been putting so much stress on my body like i've just been balancing you know training hard and putting in the work when i'm in the gym but not like killing myself and still like complementing it with proper rest to allow my body time to recover and see all like the beneficial results from the work I'm putting in as opposed to me like overtraining and over stressing out my body which leads to like inflammation, holding onto water, all that sort of stuff. So I also feel like that was played a big role too. Next tip that I really wanted to speak on because I feel like it's no secret that I've definitely been like indulging in treats and stuff. Like that's what I mean when I say this was so like I just didn't even, like, I've been posting about eating donuts, going out to dinner, eating, like, I just feel like I've totally been enjoying myself with what I'm eating, and so that's why I was really caught off guard when the scale said what it said, and just, like, how I've been feeling leaner, and again, I was reflecting, and I realized it's because I really was just eating things in moderation, like, I just would, I would eat things that I would enjoy, right, and what I wanted to have and what tasted good, but I wasn't just, like, going overboard, like, I would eat it in moderation, eat it till I felt satisfied and kind of move on. Like I wouldn't, I guess, overeat it for lack of a better term. I don't know if that's like triggering to say, but yeah, I don't know. I just would eat it more so in moderation. I'm also was reflecting because I was like, well, how, why do I feel like I was able to eat it in moderation so easily? Because I definitely feel like I go through those periods where I kind of almost feel like I kind of have that insatiate, like the insatiable, like I kind of want to just keep eating sweets and things like that. So I get it and I don't want to feel like it's, I don't want to come across like just eat it in moderation. Like it's easy because I understand it's not always that easy. And I think why it felt easy was just because I wasn't focused on it. I wasn't thinking about it so hard at all. And I think that's usually what happens when you're like, okay, I'm supposed to be eating in moderation because I don't want to overeat this and gain weight or whatever you, whatever your kind of anxiety ridden thoughts are. And I feel like that's what inevitably leads you to kind of overcompensating on the other end just because you're overthinking it. So I think that leads me to my last tip that I really, really wanted to echo to you guys is I just wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't stressing about it. I wasn't, I just wasn't even thinking about it. And I think people People underestimate how much being stressed really negatively impacts your progress towards your goals. Like not only literally physiologically, um, you know, with when you have higher cortisol levels, that's a fat storing hormone. Cortisol is our stress hormone. So I think we think that, you know, little things don't add up in the realm of stress, but it very much so does. So if you're stressing about what you're eating and making sure on track towards your goals and all this sort of stuff, and you're overthinking it and you're trying to micromanage it, like that's manifesting as stress emotionally and also physically within the body, which has repercussions. And I also think mentally it negatively impacts you because then 
like I'm saying, it has you kind of overcompensating and you keep telling yourself, I can't have it. I can't have it. Like I'm on a strict regimen and that makes you wanting it more, which makes it harder for you to like eat things in moderation and things like that. So for me, like genuinely, I just wasn't thinking about it. Like I've had a lot of things going on this past like few months, a lot of new people in my life, just a lot of events going on and things like that, like just things that we're doing. And so fitness hasn't been like, don't get me wrong. I've still been fitnessing, but more so kind of on autopilot mode of still going through everything, my normal routine, but without thinking so hard about it and just having the privilege of being able to kind of shift my intention and just energy and focus to other things while staying on track, like is what really, really helped me. And that's like a huge thing I want to echo to you guys. Like you don't need to think so hard about it all the time. Like trust, you know, check off your boxes that you have for yourself. Like, like I said, I still would go to the gym. I still kept my normal split. I was huge still on my water intake, all that sort of stuff. I added in a cardio session a week, but I wasn't, I didn't add that in and then stress about it. I'm saying, okay, did I see progress? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? I just did paid my dues, checked it off and enjoyed my life and thought about other things and did other things. And that trusting and not thinking so hard about it and not over stressing about it I think was the biggest thing more than anything that allowed me to kind of have the weight just kind of fall off and just kind of have me effortlessly lean out a little bit all right dogs we're back and I have a meeting I love when I have meetings I just feel so like like 12 year old me who was like fiending over being a businesswoman is like just so satisfied when I'm like I have a meeting like I can't I don't know how to explain it I love it me with all of my lights on to try to <laughs> light this place up all right, dogs, that's it for this little chatty vlog. Something I want to leave you with is just the fact of like have patience with your body and like have grace with it throughout its different seasons. Like I said, this was completely unintentional. It was more so kind of just the season and phase in life I've been in the past couple of months. There's been plenty of times when I finished journey where my body feels like sitting heavier just given my lifestyle at the time. And then there's other periods like now where my lifestyle has just kind of yielded a little bit of a leaner physique. And I think that's a, just a really big thing that has been able to bring me peace when it comes to my finished journey of not need to have this like crazy physique goal constantly all the time. It's just finally giving my body the space to flow given my current living I guess the way I've been living my lifestyle or that's all that sort of stuff and allowing my body to take the lead who knows you know in a couple months maybe I'll be sitting heavier again I don't really know I haven't gotten that far yet but I just kind of of course wanted to add in that little mindfulness component because I do think it really plays a really big role and so much of fitness is mental in so many ways that's kind of just camouflaged as like a fitness protocol but it runs so much deeper mentally so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this little vlog I hope you guys could take some takeaways from this whether they're like physical actual things you guys can do to help support your own journeys that you're on or maybe it's just more so like mindset change of perspective all all that fun stuff that we all love on this channel anyways if you guys like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up it really definitely helps support my channel allows me to keep doing this full time creating more videos for you guys and also allows me to know what type of content that you guys are liking if you do want to see more videos from me definitely subscribe i'm going on a very exciting trip soon which you're going to see in the next video so i definitely wouldn't want to miss that thank you guys so so much for watching i'm sending you so much love and hopefully i'll see you in the next video peace out